So I'm joined now by William Conlon, Farm Air Design and Project Coordinator with Lely Mullingar. William, thanks for joining me. I suppose, first question is, can you tell me a bit about your role within Lely? Yeah, so uh, I suppose my job is very much working with farmers who are looking at putting in a robotic milking system. Um, I'd be one of the earlier calls out to a farmer looking at putting in the system. Uh, my job is, I suppose, to walk the yard, walk the farm, get a feel for the farmer, uh, get a feel for the system they're operating and see how you could fit a robotic system into their yard. At that point then, I'd, I'd probably give them a couple of ideas of the building work required, um, you know, what kind of money they're going to need to spend to get in the system. And you're also, I suppose, looking very much towards uh, future growth opportunities. So in the last couple of years, we'd have seen a lot of people put in a single robot or put in two robots. And over time, they move to a second or a third or fourth robot. So you're very much trying to leave things open for expansion with everything you do as well. Um, but it's all about trying to get, I suppose, a plan that works for the cow and that works for the farmer. You know, cow flow in a, in a robotic system is crucial more so than a parlor because you have cows moving 24 hours of the day and um, you know it, you need to set up a yard that a farmer can still feed cows the milk lorry can still come in um, and that slurry and fertilizer can go out without impacting on the movement of cows throughout the yard so mm. i suppose they're the couple of things that we're really trying to focus on when i'm out with the farmer who's looking at putting in a robot system and i suppose then so just say a farmer is thinking about moving to a robotic milking system what are the steps um, they need to kind of take to maybe start that process yeah, so uh, like that, often before I go out, uh, one of our sales men might go out, have a walk of the yard, walk of the farm, see, first of all, is it suitable for robotic milking? Um, if it is suitable, then we generally get the farmer to visit two or three different farms. We we'll give them names, we we'll give them numbers, let them go off and visit a couple of farmers by themselves, let them hear the good, the bad, you know, um, hear the, the reality of what it's like working with a robotic system, because at the end of the day, the robot is just a machine to milk cows. Yeah. You still have to do the feed and you still have to AI cows, you still have to treat sick cows. The, mm. the robot will give you a lot of information, but you still have to do, you know, still a lot of work with cows outside of just milking. Yeah. Um, after that point then, if the farmer is keen, then I go in with them, I develop a plan. When I have the plan fully developed, I hand it over then to the project coordinator. So the project coordinator works with the builders, the farmers, the plumbers, the electricians, right throughout the building process until the robot gets fitted. Um, generally, you're looking at about 10 to 15 visits throughout that process. Um, just to make sure everything is going right. You know, we, we'd be a big advocate of everything being right first time. So we put an awful lot of emphasis and resources into getting the plan right and getting the robots fitted right. Mm. Um, and then I suppose when, it's, when it started, we hand, the ro we hand the system then over to the farm management support advisors who work with the farmers throughout, throughout the process. But from when, the, from when the first time, say one of the salesmen is on a farm until a robot gets fitted, across the team, we're probably on that farm maybe 20, 25 times. So right. there's an awful lot of moving parts to that system. Yeah, and I suppose then William, like farmers who may be milking a conventional system or even you have dry stock farmers as well. Um, I suppose the big thing would be the financial side of it. Mm -hmm. um, for maybe those coming from maybe a smaller, or from a farm that's probably maybe not making as much money, is it feasible to get move, to make that move to robotic milking? It is, and, and look, I suppose the, the TAMS grants that have been there the last couple of years have been a big help. Yeah. Um, you know, the TAMS is running out in the middle of December this year. It doesn't look like they'll be milking equipment on TAMS from next year, which is going to be a challenge for mm -hmm. farmers looking at investing in the system. Um, I suppose the one thing with the financial viability of going with it, it depends on your total investment. So the, you know, similar to a parlor or any sort of system you're putting in the farm, the milking machine is only one part of it. Yeah. So what we'd often do, and especially if you're a dry stock farmer who often have a lot of sad tanks, or an existing dairy farmer who has a lot of infrastructure already in place, the building work needed for the robots can be very minimal. Okay. You know, like I'd have farmers who'd have put in two robots and maybe spent 20, 25,000 on building work total. Right. Now I'd have farmers that have spent 50, 60, 70,000 yeah. on building work. It, it all depends, I suppose, on what's needed on the farm. But, you know, you, I talk to a lot of farmers who'd put in parlors or do building work. You know, there's no small investment now if you're going doing any sort of building work. And especially with the way, you know yourself, with the yeah. way the likes of concrete and steel and everything is gone, if you can keep the footprint of the build yeah. uh, as small as possible without compromising on the functionality and the flow of cows, mm. um, then, then the robots can financially stack up well. Yeah. I suppose there's an awful lot of farmers going with robots and going well with robots. So they wouldn't be doing it if it didn't financially make sense. But yeah. everyone is different. Everyone, yeah. what, what everyone has to borrow is, is different too. That's important just to highlight, I suppose, it doesn't have to be a big green field site. No, know? it doesn't, no. You, know, you can get away with using your own existing buildings. I'd say, I'd say about 80% of what we're doing is working, is fitting robots into existing facilities. 
you know, you'll see the, the twenty percent. You'll see the videos of the twenty percent of greenfield builds everywhere because they look good on yeah. on give it video. They look good on camera, but eighty percent of what we're doing, you're tying into existing facilities. Um, a big thing is, you know, in front of the robots, you're generally looking for a slatted area because it's a high traffic, high volume uh, cows moving in that area. Yeah. For most farmers, we can make use of an existing slatted tank within their facility. So you know, you're you're just you're trying to cut the cloth to measure where possible. Yeah. Perfect, William. Thanks for your time. No bother. Thanks, Cheers. Michael. All the best.